Um, well, this is uh, Scott Sliger over here. He's sculpting, what are you sculpting right now? A spider creature head? We're in East Columbus. Um, this is going to be the site of Otherworld. Uh, it's a 32 and some change thousand square foot interactive art installation that we're building. It's kind of a combination of like a children's science center and an escape room and a haunted house and an art gallery. So we're kind of mixing and mashing a lot of different genres of art and entertainment. We're hoping that it can appeal to people of all ages and backgrounds. Um, so when you arrive here, you're actually arriving at the headquarters of Otherworld Industries. Um, it's a company that is, um, they've kind of been doing this alternate realm exploration. They sort of uh, stumbled across this dream realm. The, that's kind of like the base reality of it. But once you go into this, this other world, um, there's all sorts of these little mini adventures almost. So um, almost like different choose your own adventures that are loosely intertwined. So when a visitor walks in, uh, our goal is for you to be completely overwhelmed. We really want you to not be able to predict what's around every corner. It's almost like a page turn of like a graphic novel or a book where you turn that corner and just get like the moment. That's our goal. Uh, this is the church. So what you're kind of seeing is the reaction of our sodium light. What this does is it takes the color spectrum out of the room. So part of the room scale activation is going to involve bringing that color spectrum back in. So if we take a normal light, then it kind of brings back the color. So kind of putting these scenic changes in the hands of the viewer. Every single piece here we fabricated in-house, designed and fabricated on our own. So there's nothing that's been bought off the shelf from anywhere else. It's all custom, one-of-a-kind pieces. So there's people with all sorts of different skill sets here to make you know, something like this come together. So kind of entering into the focal point of the space is their tree. Uh, this is where we're kind of flexing the most muscles. We have welding, scenic, tech, textiles. There's also gonna be some interactive elements that can change the color of it. So pretty much everything that's making Otherworld Otherworld is rolled up right in our center. Almost every single surface is interactive in some way. Uh, there are a ton of LEDs, there's a lot of pr interactive projection mapping. Uh, we have some interesting new concepts I'm trying out with projection mapping. So we have a lot of um, like laser, laser tracking. Um, we're tracking people throughout rooms using uh, LiDAR, which is the same technology used in self-driving cars. We have these th this 3D infinity room th that has a three-dimensional array, floor to ceiling, of like LED noodles inside of a room where all the walls are mirrors. Uh, so kind of what we're in right now is a giant three-dimensional LED pixel grid that is then mapped by our tech team. So upon opening, there's actually these large-scale 3D animations that we can put in this room and put to music. So it's not just kind of this ambient effect, but you can actually have like light physically traveling in 3D space through the room. This is also the standard selfie room. This isn't an escape room. Uh, this is more like a children's museum. So, you know, you have to think about how is this going to be used? How is it going to wear over time? How can we reduce the number of mechanical elements? Um, if we have to use mechanical elements, what kind of materials can we use? And how can we make sure that the electronics stay nice and nestled and don't get damaged? So I'm the production director. My role is to make sure that all the things that we design on paper get built in real life. Uh, and then my favorite part is the creative problem solving, where it's just like weird challenges come up when you're making things that no one's ever done before. It's, it's been really great to work with people who specialize in like the physical world. So that way I can focus on like electronics and code, which are the things that I'm good at. Another thing is we have this interactive harp, um, this spider web harp device that we're figuring out how to rig up into the air 12 feet up. So you can still pluck it and there's not too much vibration going on the sensor that it keeps tripping, but there's enough vibration that it trips the sensor and then kind of creates the harp effect. So this is the seamstress room. This is another one of our mini narratives within the space. Without revealing too much, there's this seamstress character who has a bunch of spider children and is creating uh, these kind of fluffy animals to feed to the spiders. Or is she? We'll find out. 
So all of this webbing was hand webbed, hand glued. Uh, all the spiders were welded together custom and then upholstered. So when it's fully operational, when you pluck the colored streds, uh, you get a room activation where it actually becomes a giant heart. I think this project has been able to bring together a lot of creatives and has given them the opportunity to speak up and have their ideas be heard and have them communicate and challenge each other. And I think we're showing a production model here where kind of everyone gets a play to their fullest. And I'm just hoping that later that we can set an example for that in more creative spaces around the city. I'll just come check it out, it's gonna be sweet. This is what I wanna do forever, so. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's nothing else like it anywhere.